Friendly greetings. Today is a joyous day because we're going to create an animation and then upload it into Second Life in just a few minutes. We're using the free Q Avimator program, which is also cool because it was made by residents of Second Life. And thus, you may notice it's optimized. The defaults here are pretty easy to get and hit the ground running, so to speak. I know there's other programs like Poser, but another nice thing about Q Avimator, which you can download at qavimator.org, is that it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Cross-platform friendliness is very nice. So let's take a look at the various controls here. We got a figure, of course. You can change that from male to female if you so wish. This does not affect your appearance in world. This just changes this figure so you can get an approximation because you know some poses like female modeling fashion shoot poses are more anatomically designed for some body types than others. You can also change the size you want to be miniature, but in this case, let's just leave it at 100, okay? And important, important, right here is the timeline. This is the sequence of what happens where and when. Temporal spatial <laughs> phenomena. This here is the frame. And you'll notice the frame will increment, it will go upwards as I scrub through the timeline. And there's 30 frames per second and there's 30 frames in this animation, which means the animation in total is one second long. You can click this to make it even longer if you want but for now, we'll just keep it the default length. Now, body parts, it all starts at the hip. If you wanna move the whole body relative with position, then this will become enabled if you click this. Notice that also, when I click that, there's a keyframe. These can be manually created by clicking this keyframe icon, and these define the start and stop ranges, or start and end ranges, rather, that's another way to think about it, of the different motion sequences that apply to body parts. For example, if I were to scrub forward in the timeline and then I was to move my whole body's position, do you notice that these keyframes have changed to indicate this is the start here and this is the end. And then when we play this back, then it moves me like that, and that is the animation. This is good for some sort of traveling dance animations or if you want to look like a video game character. In this case, I found that undesirable. So actually, hmm, okay. Keep in mind, this is still an alpha program. Some things aren't working as intuitively as they could. So I'll just delete that. You can click on a keyframe, then press delete key to delete it. You can also go to edit menu and optimize, and that will clean out any unused ones. So if I want to create a walk, let's have a look at the camera controls. If I click the ground and I just move my mouse around, I'm left clicking by the way, and holding down, then that's kind of like orbiting in Second Life. Similar shortcuts work because if I hold down Alt, Control, and Shift, and click the ground, then I pan. There's no arrow keys to point the way, and I mean, the arrow keys on the keyboard wouldn't work, and there's no additional tools palette for this, but it does work. If I hold down Alt and click, just like in Second Life, it'll zoom you like that. Of course, Alt and Control will orbit, but that's kind of moot because I can just click on the floor, do that anyway. So if I want to focus down on the legs, and by the way, if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can use that too, that's very nice. Scroll in and out. So I can click the leg here, let me go to frame two, and I will click the leg, this, I mean this right thigh, bok bok like a chicken, and then I will move up a few frames. And now I can either change these parameters. I can drag on the sliders. As you notice, I will be doing the hokey pokey shortly <laughs> and get my foot moving up. And there we have it. And then I can keep defining additional points. So I want to move it back to zero. I can just click zero there. And what we have now when we play this, it goes up and down, up and down. It's kind of like a kick. Of course, if we had both legs going up and down, then it would be more of a walk. So in this case, I could correspond it with the left thigh. And the left thigh, I would just click on this. And by the way, what you can also do is if you want to move these directly, move these limbs and appendages and thingies, you can hold down Alt, Control, or Shift. Because this activates, you see, it gets highlighted, and then I can click it, click right on there to do all sorts of wacky things. In this case, I just want to set it back to zero. And then I'll go forward a bit, say to approximately here where the list leg goes back down. This is why Pixar and Disney animators get the big bucks, folks. And then I will move it. So then this will go up, uh, maybe to the side for a little liveliness, and then move this up. 
and then I'll move further in the animation in the timeline and I'll reset both of these to zero. Remember zero in all these positions, I mean these rotations, just means they've reset to their original point. So now when we play this, it's kind of like a walk. Kind of like a walk. What if I want more animation? Well, the, the cool thing is you can see all these body parts and animate them independently to form a cohesive animation, like how most people move naturally. So if I want to take my arm here, I just click on this right shoulder, and I want to swing it forward in the midst of this walk for more animation, so kind of do a chop. Then I would go ahead and twist this a little bit and push this forward. And then maybe I want it to swing way back because that's kind of unnatural. And then swing it way back forward. And then by this time, it would go back to zero. And what we have here now, as I zoom out, let me, let me zoom out a bit, hold down. I'm just going to actually use the scroll wheel. From a distance, this is what someone would see me doing. And it looks kind of stiff because the rest of the body isn't quite moving. I can change that, of course, by let me zoom back in. You can add all sorts of variances by twisting the abdomen a little. So again, keyframe is created there. Going forward a bit, and I just rotate it a little back, like, whoa, I'm kind of staggering, and making it go forward, ooh, I'm kind of lurching, and then, whoo, back to zero. So what we have here is something a lot more fun as we, as someone <laughs> tries to figure out what's happening to me. And of course, my left arm might as well be holding a sign or something, please help me. But we're all in need of serious help here, aren't we? <laughs> Another cool thing, which I won't get in the depth here, but this is great to explore, because in Second Life, we can have attachments. So in this cube animator, you can't export these. These will not come with animation. But for visualization purposes, you can create what looks like prims, these props. And these arrows, I'm sure, look very familiar. So you can use them to situate. Like if you're sitting on a chair, you might place one of these behind you, right? That sort of thing. I'm just going to delete that, though. And now that we have this, I don't notice any extraneous keyframes, but of course, edit and optimize would be useful if I did have some. It would clean them up, right? Let me actually, let me just create some extraneous ones so you can see. So you see there's are additional circles. It kind of looks like an abacus now. And then edit and optimize. So it cleans those up nice and neat. And we're ready to export to Second Life right on. Let's go to File menu and Save. We've never saved this before, and it's very, very easy to do this. Save, and the save dialog comes up. Let me go to output. Now, you want to make sure the N, the suffix here, says BVH. That's the suffix you need to import into Second Life. I already have one here, but let's create a new one. We'll call this crazy walk. Dot BVH. Make sure it says that. An AVM extension may be a correct file, but it's not going to be recognized by Second Life. And now that we have a file name, let's save it, and I'll see you in Second Life. So you experienced how easy that was. And now back in Second Life, we can just go to the file menu and upload animation. Have a click on that, and you'll see here I can select it, and it was Crazy Walk BVH. So I can just click that and open it, or you can just double click it. And here it is. Now, the cool thing is you can set additional options to customize the animation further. Unfortunately, I know some of you were excited by looking at hand pose and expression. These are really iffy, and I haven't gotten them to work reliably. And I did spot a couple bugs on the issue tracker. So unfortunately, just ignore those for now. I wish they did work. And another sad thing is you cannot edit these after you upload. Even if you created the animation, they can only be set at the time of upload. And I hope in the future that's more versatile. So name and description are self-explanatory. This clearly is a crazy walk. I don't need to describe what a crazy walk looks like. <laughs> or maybe I do. But anyway, priority. This is important to know. Because if you set your priority low, this means that the points of your body, the different joints that you animated, will be overridden by other animations. Because you know sometimes multiple animations play at the same time, if you're playing this animation while you're walking, for example. But if you want this animation to have precedence, set it to the highest, which is four. So this animation will over always override other ones. And there's some different subtleties here. You want to read up on that and do some experimentation. Because in actual situations, when you have a whole lot of collision of animations, things can be variant. OK, loop. Now this will control if I play this, and it'll keep looping in a cycle. 
if I turn the loop off, then notice how it stops at the end. This controls the in and out points, which means that if I were to create something that went right in the middle, then it would start in the middle of where I originally created the animation during a loop. So remember, it was kind of a walk. Actually, let me just move this higher to 75% for more of a dramatic effect. So you now see that it's not a full walk. It's just the arm chop, 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 chop. And in a funny sort of way, if you modify these numbers in certain ways, you can get pretty funny effects. I do encourage experimentation. So if you set in and out to about the same thing like that, you get what appears to be a static pose for a while, but it's not quite the same because when you stop it, the rest of it resumes like that. Now you can preview it while you're doing different things. And inside this preview window, it's kind of hard to see, I know, but you can click as you notice the cursor changes to zoom. Click and zoom in and out to see it from different angles. And it's got the default Ruth avatar. This is not my actual avatar, folks. You can preview it while you're walking so you can see how it interacts like that. <laughs> Isn't that fun and funny? Let me just change the in and out back to zero and 100 here. And let me show you actually, priority will have a visible effect here. Because you notice when it's walking right now, it's my feet. It's not the most clear here. So I'll have to show you a quick demo on that a little bit later. But anyway, ease in and ease out, this controls the smoothest of transition from the default state, the previous state before you use this animation to when you're using it. So if you were to have a ease in phase of say two seconds, that would be very smooth. Watch how smoothly it, oh, let me just make myself stand still so you can see that there. Then ease in, okay, notice how smooth that was compared to if I was to check, change this to zero and zero here. This means it will suddenly go into this animation and then it will suddenly stop, okay? Ease out is important to look for. Watch what happens when I stopped it. Stop, okay? As opposed to, if I were to stop it with an ease out of three seconds, when I stop the animation, my, it, my arm gradually goes down. So this can be good if you set this to higher values, like even one second, for transitioning in and out of an animation. But that's enough, enough talk for now, and let's go ahead and upload that, okay? So upload, it'll take a little while, and I'll apply it to my avatar here. And you can share these, you can use animations within gestures, and I can right click, notice this is the animation, it goes into your animations folder in your inventory. I just open that, sorry if that went too fast. And I can right click, and I can play it locally, which means just I will see it, hopefully, <laughs> or I can play it in world for the amusement of others. And here we go. We're having a funny walk time. Da, da, da. I can stop it from this palette, and you can also double click to open that. If I close this, I can double click that and it'll open, and I can play it again in world. So notice when I combine this with other animations, what I meant is when I'm walking, <laughs> I'm sort of higgly jiggly. So notice my feet are still doing the animation as I had programmed it, because the priority was set to four. Whereas, if I'm going to stop this, and if I'm going to upload that one again, but with different settings, so let's go back and upload Crazy Walk with a priority of, of zero this time, okay? And I'll still set that to loop. That's fine. Ease out will be the same, one second on each end. And then I will upload it. And this time, we'll rename this to be Pri Zero, to mean it's priority zero. Now watch the difference. When I play this, this time, when I walk, my feet will be overridden by the default walking animation. Oop, that should have looped. Let's see here. Okay, so notice now, and my arms too. They're overridden that way. Versus, if I were to play the one that has a priority of four, the highest priority, that means that I'll still be doing that animation. I'll zoom in close so you can vary clearly see it. So I recommend looking up the wiki help pages. Here's the address. If you need more technical information on how to construct an animation or even a still pose. But nevertheless, I hope this has been a helpful and cheerful <laughs> illustration in action. Oh, <laughs> what am I doing dancing? I'm making a video tutorial.
friendly greetings, of course. And thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Let me know what you'd like to see next and have a lovely time wherever you are, whenever you are, and however you are animating in Second Life. <laughs>